what is overweight? What is obesity? And what is a normal weight? And the important question is why is that definition the way it is? So overweight is body mass index or BMI. And I'll go, I'm telling you in a second how it ca calculates. If your BMI is between 25 and 30, you are overweight. If it is above 30, it is obesity. And if you are between 20 and 25, you are, so to say, normal weight person, depending on this BMI. What is BMI? There is calculation based on your weight, body weight, and your height. Uh, body weight in kilograms. So kilograms, now that's a layer of complexity here. 100 kilogram is 220 pounds. So if you're 220 pounds, you're 100 kilograms. So your weight divided by your height in meters. So if you're six feet tall, it is 1.84 cent meters. 1.84 meters is six feet. So you divide that twice by your height in meters, you get what is your BMI. You don't have to do really, I'm just showing you the formula, you don't have to do anything. You go to any website, they will calculate it for you, including the Pennington website. If you go to our Pennington website, this is just the main page, right here, in the right side corner, a BMI calculator. So click on that, put in your pounds, your height in inches, it will tell you what's your BMI and in which category you fall. So it's very simple to do. I just wanted to show you how it's calculated. Okay, so far so good? All right, so now what, why the cutoffs? Why, why 20 and 25 and 30? Here's the reason. If you plot a graph of health risk on this side and BMI on your x-axis, what we get sort of a J J-shaped curve here, that green line that you see is a J-shaped curve. So <clears throat> you will notice the health is the lowest between 20 and 25. As you cross BMI crosses 25, your health risk increasing. And if you cross 30, it really takes off the health risk due to, associated with BMI. That's where those cut off from. So the lowest risk is between 20 and 25. That's why it's considered normal weight. Between 25 and 30 is considered overweight. So it's kind of getting there. And above 30 is considered obesity. You will also notice that there is greater risk below 20, right? You see on this side, right, left side. So why is that? Um, <coughs> It is considered, it's thought, that that could be because of those people who are very, very thin because of some major problem. You know, they are thin because of some chronic illness, some uh, infection, some other disease or cancer or what have you. Those who are grossly underweight and those are driving that increased health risk on this side. Anyway, so that's how those BMI categories are derived. So, a question, what causes obesity? To answer that question, let me answer, ask another question. What causes cancer? It is easier to illustrate with this example. What causes cancer? Now, we know that cancer is uncontrolled growth of cells that are not, you know, that's not necessary, and then they go in some other organs. So that's basically what cancer is. But what causes cancer? Now, is there only one reason of cancer? I mean, can you not think that, look, cancer is linked with excessive radiation, sun, UV light radiation, or radioactivity, or certain chemicals, or certain infections, or genes, or diet, or what have you. So many causes, right, of cancer. Same thing, obesity is storage of excess fat. Okay, that's the condition. But what causes storage of excess fat? That is an important question. You can't stop at saying, oh, storage of excess fat. What causes it? <clears throat> well, the answer to that would be an imbalance between in energy in and energy out. Maybe too much energy in, too little out. That is what causes the excess storage fat. Answer is correct. But my question again is what causes that imbalance? You know, I don't want to stop at that point. 
by saying, oh, it's imbalance. What causes that imbalance? So when you start looking, digging like this, you will find, and this is a slide I <laughs> borrowed from Dr. Bouchard, this is a these are just a few of those causes in various departments. Mm -hmm. You will see there is just, this is just the biology here. And it is not even a complete list of all the genes and proteins and um, <clears throat> various hormones, what have you, that can influence that balance. Then there are the social environmental factors. Then there is physical environmental factors. Then the, there are behavioral factors. I'll give you one minute to just, just look at them. I don't want to explain all of them, but I just want just to make a point that look at numerous facts, how many factors can influence your energy balance that we are talking about. <coughs> so, <coughs> of those, and there are literally, there is a website that lists all the contributors to obesity that have been listed so far in various ways, and the number on that website, there are those lists, there are 84. 84 various contributors of obesity that have been listed. But there are these sort of, sort of serious, 10 serious contenders, so to say, putative contributors to obesity. Some of them are listed here is infections. In, there are certain infections due to viruses or other pathogens that have been shown to cause obesity, certainly in animal models and shown to be associated with human obesity. My lab works in with, uh, with that in this area, I, we have some viruses that we work with that viral infections cause obesity. So that's an example. And that's also an example of how obesity is not a choice. If you don't get adequate sleep, you're more likely to develop obesity. <clears throat> Another example is ambient temperature. Now, it is, uh, you know, before we learn to control climate, the way we do now. There was winter, there was summer, and there were all these uh, times where body temperature was something different than what you would like it to be. So during winter, we shiver, right? I mean, if you're indoor, the temperature outside is cooler, you're going to shiver if there is no climate control. That shivering in uses up energy. You're continuously shivering, in a, so to say. That's going to use up energy. Uh, in summer, you're going to perspire, you're, and you're going to eat less. You remember in, you know that if it is too warm, you're not going to feel like eating a whole lot. You're not going to feel that hungry. So all these were nature's way of sort of making you control your body weight, and that's the theory that, that ambient temperature takes away that, that type of activity, and that may contribute to it. That's just a, one of the theories. Is so, sleeping around? No. So according to that theory, so people tend to choose their mates, mm -hmm. uh, so, so getting married, so to say, uh, of the, that their BMI range. Mm -hmm. so, so, so if their BMI is heavier, and if they marry somebody with heavier BMI, and whatever that reason is, whether it be genes or what have you, their um, the successive generations are going to carry that uh, tendency. That's what it means. So these are, that's why they are putative factors. This is the word I like to use to describe obesity. Obesities is not one disease. It's multiple diseases and conditions. I just gave you some examples of what obesity is. And why is this important? Why I'm telling you all this, I'm just sharing this information with you, is because Unless we know what cause obesity specifically, we won't go after that cause, right? If, I, if you come to me, I'm treating you for obesity, and here I'm telling you eat less, move more, but indeed your obesity is due to sleep debt. Unless we fix that problem, how is this going to be effective? Here's an example. So that's why we need cause-specific treatments for obesity, and it, we can't have cause-specific treatment if you don't know what the cause is. Okay, so that's why this is important. <clears throat> so obesity, again, let's go back to now, how fat is stored in body? Obesity is, okay, let's go back. Obesity is storage of excess fat, and I'll give you an example. This is me in Destin, Florida. 
eating that salad, okay? It, as I say, it's not a salad bar. It looks like a salad bar to me. The whole thing is a salad. <laughs> I, I, I did not eat the whole thing, but I, I tried. <laughs> I tried. So, so if I do like this, if this much amount of food at that time, what's going to do, what my body is going to do is welcome all that excess fat. Body wants you to send fat to the body. That's how we develop. We de when we develop, we didn't have abundance, our bodies didn't have abundance of food around us. So body learned to grab onto and hold on to every single thing, piece of energy that we got. So that's why we have this mechanism of storing fat in our body. So when body gets this excess fat, excess energy, it's so to say, broadly speaking, gets stored into two components. One is glycogen and one is fat. Glycogen, imagine, it's like it's stored very little, but it is sort of our cash. It's not a bank account. It's a hard cash that you will have in the house for emergencies kind of thing. So glycogen is giving you immediate burst of energy. So when we were developing a saber-toothed tiger jumped in front of you, you need to run. And that run, that energy came from glycogen, just a quick one. But if you're hunting, you're going to need to run for longer time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after uh, <coughs> an animal, that comes from a, that requires a sustained energy that needs to be released. And that comes from fat that is stored in our body. So the excess energy gets divided into two. Little bit, very little store, gets stored as glycogen. Much of it gets stored as in fat cells. Point here is energy storage is necessary for survival. It's not a bad thing. Having fat stored in a body is not a bad thing. Okay, what, when it becomes too, too much, when it's excessive, and it, depending on where it is stored, that's, those are the points I'm going to make today. That's when we have uh, trouble starting. 